morning and welcome to Kid News. I'm Kim. Today is Wednesday, September 30th, 2020. And we begin with bad words still considered bad even when they're funny and said by a bird. A total of five potty-mouthed parrots have now lost the opportunity to mingle with the public after they started swearing at park visitors and each other at a wildlife center in England. Eric, Jade, Elsie, Tyson, and Billy are all African greys that had been donated within the same week by five different owners. They quarantined together before being placed on display, which might be where one of them taught the others the naughty nuggets. Many customers thought it was hilarious, but concern for the kids prompted the staff to split up the birds and temporarily remove them from public view. It's hoped that time apart will result in more family-friendly language going forward. The COVID bubble has burst for the NFL. Three players and five staff members on the Tennessee Titans just tested positive for the virus. It is the first significant outbreak for the league, and the team is taking no chances. The Titans have canceled all in-person activities, as has their last opponent, the Minnesota Vikings. No such worries for the Chiefs. They crushed the Ravens Monday night as quarterback Patrick Mahomes became the fastest in NFL history to reach 10,000 passing yards. But even as he hit the milestone, his mom Randy was focused on something else. Mid-game, she tweeted, If this announcer doesn't stop calling my son Pat, I may scream. Within minutes, word reached ESPN analyst Bob Riddick, who announced on air, Guilty, guilty, guilty. My apologies, Patrick. The first presidential debate is in the rearview mirror, and by all accounts, it was an exhausting, chaotic, mud-wrestling mess. Both men talked over each other and the moderator to the point where many analysts believe neither man won, and it was the American people who lost. Even so, most Republicans still say President Trump did the better job, while most Democrats believe challenger Joe Biden had the advantage. There are two more debates on the docket, with the next scheduled for October 7th, followed by the final one on October 15th. If those next debates take place, there's a good chance that changes may have to be made to the format and the rules. No one likes a middle-of-the-night emergency wake-up call, and that's probably especially true for astronauts floating in a tin can 35 miles above Earth. NASA had to sound the alarm earlier this week when it appeared that the space station's pesky air leak was getting worse. It wasn't, but a faulty reading made it seem like it was. The good news, they've narrowed their search to the main work area on the Russian side. As one NASA manager put it, instead of a bunch of haystacks, we're down to maybe one haystack. But he added, it's still a needle we're looking for. Extra air supply tanks are headed up tomorrow. But the agency says as long as the leak doesn't worsen, the space station will be fine through spring. First, we had the socially distanced six-foot candy shoot. Now, as Halloween nears, we're seeing some other pretty cool ideas to make sure the holiday can still happen. The latest comes from Luke Keyes of Austin, Texas, who has two options at the ready. One is a candy shooting cannon, much like the t-shirt guns at sporting events, and the other is a remote-controlled robot to handle the handouts. Artie stands about six feet tall, is made out of a powered wheelchair, cameras, and wood, and will roll up to trick-or-treaters holding a tray loaded with sweets. Mr. Keys hasn't taken to heart the advice of the Centers for Disease Control, which is urging all Americans to avoid the annual ritual of going door-to-door in search of sugar. Trick-or-treating might not be the only treasured tradition in the crosshairs of COVID. The snow day may also be in jeopardy. According to the New York Times, now that we've all honed our Zoom skills, many school leaders are rethinking the need to call it quits when Mother Nature doesn't cooperate. Not a flake has fallen in Manhattan, but the district there has already canceled snow days for the year. Shakopee, Minnesota beat everyone to the punch. It took its bad weather days virtual back in 2018. Other districts may soon decide to Zoom heat waves and hurricanes. As one Philadelphia teacher put it, for the sake of curriculum continuity, it's a good thing, but not in terms of the nostalgia of waking up at 5 a.m. to check the ticker at the bottom of the television screen. A Maryland mom was even more blunt. Now, every day is a snow day. And that's it for Kid News this morning. Now, our Kid News quiz. 
Which NFL team announced an outbreak of the coronavirus? The Tennessee Titans. Why did five parrots get moved from public view at an English wildlife park? They were swearing at visitors. What prompted a rude wake up call for the space station astronauts? A faulty reading made it look like their mysterious leak was getting worse. What winter respite may get zoomed out of existence? The snow day. In one for the road, if it isn't a bird or a plane, it just might be a flying paramedic. The North Air Ambulance District in the United Kingdom is testing a new jet pack specifically designed for first responders to get to hard to reach areas. The James Bond like suit holds two mini engines on each arm, a bigger one on the back, and a medical kit that can hold defibrillators, painkillers, and splints. Using it, medics can fly 32 miles an hour, up to 12,000 feet in the air. On the test run, they had to reach a make believe injured 10 year old in rugged terrain. Instead of a 25 minute hike, they got her in just 90 seconds. The director of the air ambulance said he didn't know what to expect, but that the result was quite honestly awesome. Before we go, it's time for our kid news shout outs. First, to our rock star teachers, Mrs. Hansen and her class at Barbara Bush in Mesa, Arizona, and Mrs. Sideway's students at Hawthorne North in Vernon Hills, Illinois. And we send birthday wishes to Isabella in Minden, Louisiana. William in Dallas, Texas, Peter in Toronto, Ontario, Camille in Naples, Florida, Alyssa in Van Wert, Ohio, to Massachusetts for Briggs in Duxbury and Nella in Newton, Pennsylvania for Alina in Ambler and Jonah and Micah in Wayne, and California for Henry in Los Angeles and Ruby in San Diego. And belated birthday wishes to Patrick and Samantha in Grand Blanc, Michigan. Thanks for listening, everyone, and we'll see you back here for more kid news tomorrow morning. <laughs>